Last night on MasterChef Australia, ten contestants in an elimination challenge made a choice. Decision time. Hit the ocean or tackle a crocodile. What is that? And for four of those hopefuls, the MasterChef dream ended. Tonight... Gee, I'm getting hungry! ..the remaining amateurs have washed up on foreign shores. Nigh on lunacy. Tony Cash hit! Anything goes in the Desert Island Challenge. Some of the best cooking that I've seen so far in the competition. And for six more contestants, entry to the top 24. Who's going to get those aprons? I believe I'm going to get the apron today. Will he cook it in time in an hour? It's doable. It's doable. It's day five of Top 50. I'm still here, I'm really excited and want to go out there and give it all I've got. I'm definitely ready to embrace whatever challenge you're throwing at me. <laughs> As we walk into Turbine Hall, we see big palm trees and coconuts and sand. Oh, he's got a captain's hat on. Don't they look gorgeous? The judges are all dressed in fancy dresses, castaways. The boys are wearing very cute ensembles of sailor suits, but their little sailor hats on was really, really cute. <laughs> Contestants, welcome to a whole new day in the competition. Today, we've turned Cockatoo Island into an uncharted desert isle. For today's challenge, you're going to take your five favourite ingredients and turn them into a desert island dish. Mm. So think about it, you're washed up on a desert island. What are you going to cook? What is the dish you can live off on a desert island? Something you can imagine eating every single night of the week. This challenge, at cooking our desert island dish, lets us cook exactly what we want to cook with our favourite ingredients and show the judges exactly the kinds of food that we love to cook. Today is all sunshine and sand because it's all about getting into the top 24. No elimination. Oh. When Gary says that there's no elimination today, oh, it's just a big relief. So the pressure's off or the pressure's on, depending on how you look at it, but that's a great kind of day. It means that we can really, really show who we are without that pressure of thinking, this may send me home. Today, six of you will earn the right to wear one of these. The MasterChef apron. Remember the key to the MasterChef kitchen and the top 24. Six people will be going through to get an apron. It just gives you something so much to strive for and I'm really wanting to get an apron. There are six people already wearing these aprons and they're through to the top 24. You want to be standing over there. Today is your opportunity. Guys, time is running out. This is your second last chance to win one of those coveted MasterChef aprons. Have you got what it takes? I hope so. I would love to get myself an apron. It would be a great moment for me and something that I'd be very, very proud of achieving. Here's what your cooking must do today. Number one, it must scream, I deserve to be in the top 24. It must taste amazing and it must represent who you are. It must be food that you want to eat. I know I can do the job and I know I'm up to the challenge. I would love to be included in the top 24. You've got 60 minutes to take five of your favourite ingredients and the pantry ingredients. These include stock. Flour, eggs, vinegar, butter, cream, and sugar. And create a brilliant dish for us today. Castaways! Your time starts now! Go, go, go. The 60 minute starts, it's a pretty crazy thing. Like, everyone's just going nuts. Monster. <laughs> That's unreal. Oh, this is going to be delish. I'm making a ribeye. It's going to go with a celeriac puree, some grilled asparagus, and finishing off with a beetroot confit. I've had a lot of practice with this cut as well, so I am looking forward to it and I'm feeling very confident. 
I'm making soft-hearted chocolate puddings with uh, chunky honeycomb, raspberry cream, and hopefully if I have time, a little raspberry essence to sit it on top. So it'll, it'll look kind of like, I guess, a piece of volcanic rock out in the middle of a pink ocean. So a bit like a desert island. I'm going to do chocolate brownies because being on a desert island, what more do you need? Hopefully these will be the best brownies the judges have ever tasted and I will be happy. Danielle. Hi. Wow. What are you making? This is a rocket-infused pasta dough. OK. Because I'm making green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham? What, your style of green eggs and ham? Yeah. Which yeah. is? Um, so it's an egg yolk ravioli, and in the uh, ravioli we've got some beautiful fresh ricotta. So why yeah. can you eat this forever? Because oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Makes you happy. It you does. It that. puts a smile on your face. Yeah. How much do you want to be in that top 24, Danielle? It means everything to me. Um, you know, I've been working with my family for the past four years to sort of rebuild their business after they had some trouble, and I'm glad that I could give something back to my yeah. mum and dad. But now's the time for me to really get on and, and do what I absolutely love, and that's cooking. We've been through some pretty hard times of late, my family, and when we're sitting down together eating a meal, we don't have to think about the hard stuff. Toast to Danielle. However far she goes, it doesn't matter. She's always our girl. It's just enjoying each other's company. Good stuff. Yeah. Good girl. Good luck. Thanks. I'm doing a seared tuna steak with grated daikon with a citrus soy sauce with julienne beetroot, ginger, and spring onions on top. I really could eat this dish every day for the rest of my life. It's got a lot of stuff going on on it, but it's still nice and simple and delicate. Seamus. Hang on, boys. How you going? Yeah, good, mate. Yesterday, you cooked that very simple fish dish. It's a little undercooked. I was certain I was going home last night when I got some of the comments from the judges, so I'm very, very relieved to be here right now. This is your kind of food, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's barely any cooking. Um, the only thing I do is I sear the tuna, and the rest of it's basically all raw. Yum. Beautiful. Yeah. Today, I have to cook with everything I've got to make sure that this dish is the best thing that it possibly could be. I'm excited about this one. Good, good luck. Thanks, Gary. I'm making my mum's recipe. It's a twice-cooked pork belly. So I'm going to braise, and then after that, I will be deep frying it. I will serve with rice cakes and also apple slaw. My name is Billy Law, and I'm from Central Coast of New South Wales. I grew up in Malaysia, and I came to Australia in 1996. I'm a web designer by day and a food blogger by night. When I started a food blog, that's when I realised this is what I want to do, this is what I'm passionate about. I do want a new challenge in my life. So I think this will be great. There's a little bit of the joy of cooking going on here today. Concentration, loving the stuff. You've got 45 minutes to go. I'm doing a rack of lamb, and then I'm going to do beetroot, asparagus, roast cheese on papillot, which is just basically cooking in a bag, so an oven within an oven, and the little fresh beetroot salad, and then the other component, I'm going to attempt a souffle, which I think is probably nigh on lunacy, but we'll see how it goes. I'm Tom Rutledge from Sydney, and I'm the general manager of a wine company. My mum's a really tremendous cook, so from a really early age, I remember just hanging off the stove and watching her and seeing if I could help. I've entered the MasterChef competition because I think it's a, a great adventure and you just never quite know what's going to come out of one of these opportunities and I'm keen to find out. The souffle. Make or break. It could be a train wreck or it could be... It could be okay. Sun, how are you going? Pretty well. I'm exciting really... Day, isn't oh, it? I'm so Get excited about this want. challenge. That's exactly right. Cook my favourite things. So I'm doing a bruschetta with rocket, asparagus and a slow cooked egg. I really love eggs and I want to showcase them with a technique known as onsen eggs, which is a Japanese technique of slow cooking eggs. I believe the Japanese housewives used to put their eggs in when okay, they were having the their baths. 63. What I'm concerned about, if that egg is overcooked, that, that dish is an absolute disaster. You might as well boil an egg. If my slow cooked eggs don't turn out right and that yolk isn't gorgeous and luxurious and oozing, I'm going to be in trouble. In 30 minutes time, six of you are going to be safe in that beautiful place called the MasterChef Kitchen. 
You've got less than 30 minutes to go. Come on, fellas, let's go. There's 30 minutes to go, cooking our desert island dish with five of our favourite ingredients. And at the end of the challenge, we know six are going to be going through to the top 24, but nobody's going to be going home today. The atmosphere was quite frantic and you could actually feel the activity going on around you. But I am very focused and I just kept getting on with the job. My dish today is just a ribeye and it's just been sliced and then some uh, lashings of shaved foie gras and white truffle on top with um, a couple of onion rings which also have a bit of truffle too. Hey, I'm Matt and I work in IT and I'm from Melbourne. My current job isn't really fulfilling and satisfying me every day. You know, my real passion is food, so that's where I want to be. I love to cook food that is exciting, that has a little bit of theatre to it, that's playful, that's a little creative, but still respects the ingredients. We can get all technical and all jazzy, but if, you know, if the ingredients aren't respected, then you've just got a whole bunch of fancy shit on the plate. Oh, Matt. So five ingredients are? Uh, white white truffle. truffle. White truffle. Ethical foie gras from Spain. What makes it ethical? Um, well, it's actually, um, the, the ducks are actually free range. They're not forced fed. My concern always when you're using the very best of the most expensive dishes, because let's face it, that is a not a cheap cut of beef, oh, right? I know. It's pretty much the best you can get. White truffle foie gras, for one portion, how much do you reckon that is? About a hundred dollars for food cost. Um, I was just thinking, you know, if I'm, if I'm on an island, I don't have to worry about money. And if they're already there, I might as well go for what it. What happens if you overcook the steak or the white truffle doesn't shine through? Well, that would be a big, uh, big disaster. Disastrous. If I don't nail this dish, they're definitely going to come down on me. But if they do love it, then hopefully it will just kind of scream me on through to the top 24. I'm cooking a chocolate and hazelnut praline tart with a raspberry reduction and creme fraiche. Marina, how are you going? Hi. Good, thanks. You having fun? Yeah, yeah. Why could you eat this for the rest of your life? Um, because I'm a sweet fan. I love making dessert. Yep. Um, chocolate's one of my favourite. I always use it. Is this going to be good enough to impress us? Uh, yeah, definitely. OK, then. Mm, See you soon. Chocolate. My name's Irina Dunn, and I'm a personal trainer from Perth. I like to cook all types of foods, mainly desserts, but I also cook savoury and seafood. One day I hope to open my own restaurant, serving healthy organic dishes and healthy options that people can eat every day. Billy, how you going, man? Hey, guys. What's your dish? Twice cooked pork belly, so braceless, and then I'm going to deep fry them until um, golden brown. Why is this the dish that you'd be happy eating for the rest of your life? That's the dish that I first I learned, and it's still my favourite dish. Off, off your mum? Yes. I don't like cooking until I uh, migrated to Australia. So you've got a bit of catching up, really, haven't you? I do, I do. I'm excited. It sounds like a great dish. I'll try my best. Thanks. Loving the concentration in here. You can see it's all about yourself, but don't be complacent. You've got 15 minutes to go. Come on, guys! Come on, guys! It's doable. It's doable. I'm looking at having a beautifully seared and I'm hoping to have it a nice rare. It is a challenge cooking a big piece of meat like this, but just something I love cooking and it just gives me excitement and a buzz to show off for a bit. I really believe I'm going to get the apron today. There's only blue skies and sunshine for six of you. Who's going to get those aprons? You've got ten minutes to go. I'm keeping a really close eye on that MasterChef clock because one thing that seems to happen every single time is the last 10 minutes just float away. So I take out the first egg, crack it, I cut into it. The yolk's right. I breathe a huge sigh of relief. I may have done a simple dish. It may be too simple, but at least I'm doing it right. Kuma! Hello. How are you, mate? Good, thanks. What have you done here? I'm making coconut cream. You're making coconut cream from scratch? Yep. You put the coconut in there and you grate it out. Yeah, I love that. So what's your dish? Um, I'm doing a rice that's cooked in coconut water. Yeah. And then making a fragrant prawn curry with oh. coconut milk. You've got the biggest smile on your face. <laughs> Are you happy right now? Oh, very. You're in a good place? Yeah, I feel very confident. I'm Kumar Pereira. I'm a graphic design teacher in Sydney. My dream is to run a residential cooking school along with my wife. 
I love teaching and I love cooking, so I've decided to combine the two. When I stand in the kitchen, I feel in power, I feel in charge, and I feel ready to take on anything. Cheers. I would love to give everyone else a run for their money. Game on. <laughs> So we're going to have a great yes. prawn dish? Yes. Looking forward Can't to it. Can't wait, Kumar. Can't wait. Some of the best cooking that I've seen so far in the competition, I'm really excited to taste. Today's the day they have to perform. Yep. Six of them will go through to that top 24. Seamus is impressing me. He's got a Japanese little feel to his dish, which is what he loves cooking. He's picked tuna as one of his principal ingredients, and I think uh, he's doing a great job so far. Look, Arena's doing a great job too. She's picked a dessert. She's picked chocolate. It's a classic. She's picked raspberries, which is a classic. And she's making a very simple chocolate tart. Is it going to be good enough? You know, will it impress us? It all depends on how well she puts it all together. I'm concerned about Andrew. He's got a, a rib of beef. That looks absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, massive. It's beef. massive. That takes a long time to cook. Yep. But not only that, a long time to rest. Yep. Will he cook it in time in an hour? Loving the smells in this kitchen. Gee, I'm getting hungry. You've got five minutes to go. Just watching my souffle sink in the oven. The souffles weren't rising. I realised that I neglected the butter, the ramekins. So I think that's now an uh, asparagus and uh, goat curd pudding. I'm trying to get a souffle to rise up a, an unbuttered ramekin. It's not going to happen. That's like asking a three-legged donkey to win the Melbourne Cup. Watching my souffles sink in the oven. The souffles weren't rising. I realised that I neglected the butter, the ramekins. So I think that's now an uh, asparagus and uh, goat curd pudding. I decided to plate up the souffle. I thought that there was enough interest in terms of the flavour. I also wanted to demonstrate that I had attempted something that wasn't necessarily within my comfort zone. The atmosphere oh. in the room is very hectic. Everyone's like cranked up the pace and was like just doing everything like 100 miles an hour. All the components are done. It's time to plate up. I'm very happy what I did today. I'm very proud of myself. My brownies are out. Hopefully the pineapple head will just just show we want a desert island. I really, really, really want an apron today. I don't want to wait any longer. Here's the moment of truth. I take the steak out of the oven. It looks like it's cooked almost perfectly medium rare and it looks just to die for. Plating panty cash hit. Loving the smell of this stuff. You've got 30 seconds to go. Come on, guys! The final second countdown, I can see everybody working really frantically. I'm just working on my plate to make sure that everything's set right and I've got my icing sugar to dust over the top. I was happy with how I presented the dish and just how it looks on the plate to me is just makes me even more hungry to eat it. I feel that I have done something that really typifies a desert island and I'm very confident that I can hold my own. That's it, down to the wire again. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Your time's up. Well, you've just cooked some great food. We are truly excited. I reckon this is the best so far in the top 50. No excuses. You got the ingredients that you wanted, and you cooked a dish that you'd be happy to eat for the rest of your life. Now, it's tasting time. When you hear your name, come up to the tasting bench. Seamus, please step up. I'm really hoping that this dish will give me a spot at the top 24. It's a representation of how I like to cook, and I'm hoping that my flavours are right on the money. Tia tuna with grated daikon and beetroot with a citrus soy sauce. Just get a bit of everything. Yes, chef.
This is great cooking. Beautiful, precise, the cooked tuna, seared on the outside. Everything's just popping in my mouth. It's brilliant cooking, man. I want to say the F word. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, George. The challenge is really whether you can see yourself eating this dish every day of your life. I can. Delish. You hold, you pass out, you eat. Oh. <laughs> Nothing more to say, really, Seamus, is there? So much left. The fact that the judges like my dish and that the top 24 contestants really loved it as well, I've never felt kind of prouder of my cooking in, in all my life. It was just amazing. Kumar, would you like to bring your dish up? I am really pleased with the way the dish looks because it looks very, very tropical. It looks like it's just come from a desert island. So I'm extremely happy with it. It's prawns in a fragrant coconut curry sauce with rice that's cooked in coconut water. Kumar, is it going to be enough to get you through to the top 24? I certainly hope so. What you've got in there is beautifully cooked prawn. And what I like about it is the flavours, they're subtle and the sauce is light. You know, it's not thick and creamy and, you know, overly done. And so those prawns shine through. Absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Mm. Kuma, a really tasty dish. I think you've found your stride now. Thank you. Matt, can you bring your dish up, please? I'm terrified and scared because if they don't like this, then I know they're just going to come down on me for using such ridiculous ingredients. Caper and beef, onion rings, some truffle, and then some ethical foie gras. I think you've cooked all the ingredients really well. I think the beef's cooked beautifully. The onion rings I love. You know, they're lovely and crispy, they're crunchy, everything an onion ring should be. Thanks. I just question, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. I'm just saying I love it, I'd eat it, happy. I'm, I just question whether the, the value of all that truffle and all that foie gras that you've tried to grate over the top is really worth it. That, that's a very, very expensive dish. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah, no, I'm it's... just saying think about it, all right? But I like your cooking. If you're going to bring five ingredients, you might as well bring some of the most expensive ingredients, mind you. You might as well pick white truffle, foie gras, really good beef. But I have a problem. If you're going to bring five ingredients, you might as well bring some of the most expensive ingredients, mind you. But I have a problem with the fact that we are in Australia. We have amazing produce here. We hear a lot of talk about seasonality and locality, and yet we still labor under this notion that white truffles should be eaten here. They have traveled around the world, they lose their freshness. Take a prawn straight out of the sea in Queensland, and it is at its peak. Take that beef out of the paddocks and hang it properly here in Australia, and it's at its peak. I like the dish. I question the politics. I hope that the political aspect of my dish that Matt brought up won't sort of interfere with their final decision because the dish was great, the beef was cooked absolutely perfect and I just hope that they remember those great flavour combinations. Tom, turn. I'm a little bit concerned, particularly about the souffle.
That's cooked really well. So well done. I love this little chutney of beetroot here. And that beautiful sort of delicate souffle. Thank you. Where I don't really get this vegetable parcel with goat's cheese. OK. Thank you. George did like the flavours of the souffle. Maybe I am getting one of those six aprons today. Danielle, can you bring your dish down to the tasting bench? I'm so nervous. I really, really want that spot in the top six today. I know it's a clever dish for me, but is it a clever dish to the judges? Egg yolk ravioli in a rocket pasta with ricotta and serrano ham. Is that how you want it to, to be? Um, usually I like it to sort of run through the salad leaves so it creates a, a bit more of a salad dressing. Good. It's good. Love it. Really love it. And textually it's lovely, so I get that, you know, that crunchy, crispy ham. Get the nice smooth ricotta, get beautiful pasta that's cooked Gaut, you know, very, very well. And then you've got that sort of gooey yolk in the middle. And more than that, I just love the way your brain thinks about that yolk running through the lettuce. That's, uh, that's how a chef thinks. Thank you. John, please bring your dish forward. It's uh, chocolate brownies with a cherry and cream sauce. I actually really like this dish. I love the nuts and this little cherry compote's delicious, the cream. Wow, that there, use it as a hat. You have it, George. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Arena, bring forward your dish, please. Chocolate hazelnut praline tart with raspberry reduction and creme fraiche. I think this is the best dish we've tasted so far. Thin, crunchy, crumbly tart shell, really, really intense chocolatey filling that's satin smooth, really clever bit of cooking and an absolute ripper. Well done. Thank you. Matt says that my dish is the best dish so far. I didn't expect it and I'm just really happy inside. Andrew, you're next. Oh boy. I'm hoping today that I can show the judges a new way of cooking this meat. I am feeling a little bit anxious, strangely calm at the same time. A little bit country, a little bit caveman. Ribeye with a celeriac puree, char-grilled asparagus and a beetroot confit. That is the biggest ribeye I've seen. It's massive. Has it cooked? I've got it cooked between blue and rare. Blue and rare? Yes. Is that the way you eat your ribeye? I love a nice piece of ribeye and I do like it rare. Let's cut and have a look. George is carving my piece of steak, and when he does, it's just raw, and I've just totally screwed up this piece of meat. The unfortunate thing is when you cook this meat blue to rare, even rare, all this connective tissue that connects all the bits of meat together mm -hmm. doesn't break down, yep. and it's tough and chewy. 100% of the time, customers would send this back. Sure. That's raw sure. meat. Would you eat this? Um, looking at that now, no. 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 The beetroot relish is tasty, the asparagus is char-grilled and it's nice. My eye's drawn to this big hunk of raw meat. Sure, sure. It's not acceptable. Yep. It didn't feel good. My gut just sank. I'm going to take my lumps and take my instruction and learn from it. 
Billy, would you like to bring your dish up? When I look down on my dish, I think it looks beautiful, maybe a bit monotone, but I'm quite happy with it. Twice cooked pork belly, served with an apple slaw, with rice cake. Could you eat this for, for eternity? Yes, I will. Why is that? It's my mum's recipe. It's a comfort food for me. No fail every single time. I love it. Just one more little bit of crackling. Billy, that's delicious. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. And I love that sort of Malay idea of combining that fattiness with that, you know, sweet, syrupy sauce. It's gorgeous. It's delicious. Thank you. Billy, is this dish better than your mum's? I would think so, yes. You should never say that, my no, friend. Sorry. <laughs> Four words. Dish of the day. <laughs> I am totally speechless and surprised. I know I can do a good dish, but to claim dish of the day, that totally unexpected. And hopefully there's a spot for me on the top 24, maybe? Sun, can you bring your dish up to the tasting table? This is slow cooked eggs on bruschetta with asparagus. You happy with that? I am happy with that. Sun, it's delicious. It really is. It's perfectly cooked egg. Absolutely smashing. Beautifully done. Right amount of seasoning. And nice little vinaigrette. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. This is a really simple dish. And I love the low temperature cooked egg. It's a fantastic technique. But it is, at the end of the day, toast, asparagus, and a poached egg on the top yep. with a bit of vinaigrette. So I kind of want to see more. OK. I know that I'd be showing the judges that I've got the skills and the determination to just grab this and run with it. Hopefully, I get one of those aprons. Alana, step up. I'm really proud of what I've put on the plate today. I think that they will really see the kind of foods that I, I will be cooking in the top 24 if I make it through. And I'm hoping that they love it enough to give me that chance. Soft-hearted chocolate pudding with honeycomb, raspberry cream and a raspberry essence. How do we eat this? Do you want me to put it together for I'd you? I'd love you yep. to. Can we have a look? Some cream, yep. A bit mean on the cream, isn't it? Alright, I'll put so I can put some more on. Love that. Look at that. It's beautiful. You put a dollop on George Dollop. Yes. Yeah, baby. <laughs> George, you can talk on our behalf. I know exactly Talk, what you're going to say. Five words. <laughs> Second dish of the day. <laughs> I think that's the best dish of the day for me. Yeah. Brilliant dish. Right, thank you. It's really exciting because to cook one of the best dishes of the day, I'm feeling really confident that. I'm going to get a place in the six today. We asked you to cook your desert island dish, the dish that you could eat for the rest of your life. Now that dish could change your life. We're standing there in front of the judges, and I'm as tense as a spring. I really want to hear my name called for one of these six aprons. You guys did a fabulous job today. They were great dishes. But at the end of the day, we've chosen six people that put up the best food. 
those six people will have the pleasure of joining these guys in the top 24. All of us are wishing that we could be there with the top six. The MasterChef apron symbolizes a mark of quality, a mark of achievement, and something that we all aspire to. If you hear your name, please step forward. If you hear your name, please step forward. Alana. Billy. This competition is all about producing great food and dishes we're looking forward to eating. With that in mind, you're through to the top 24. I can't believe it. I have this massive just relief to think I've made it from top 50 through to the top 24 and I'm there, I'm ready to go. Billy, how does it feel? Eight days ago, I'll probably still think about what I want to do, still in the intersection, choosing between my normal daily life or chasing my dream and to be on MasterChef. Well, Billy, wake up, because it's going to happen. Pinch me. It's happening. <laughs> Alana, did you think the day was going to end this way for you? Oh, I had no idea this morning. All I knew was that I just had to get out there, cook, and just hope that you three loved it. Over you go. Well done. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of myself. I'm definitely confident with my ability and my cooking. I'm going to cut the judges with my flavour. <laughs> Arena. I'm the third called, and I've been called up on my own. Have you just done dishes that you've practised here so far? Uh, no, I haven't. Because when we talk to you about food, your eyes don't light up. If I talk to you about running a marathon or perhaps doing the Hawaiian Ironman, look, you see, look, immediately there it comes. The, eye, the eyes crinkle and the smile comes up. You need to have that same desire. We have faith in your ability to cook. What we want to see now is your eyes light up with that same excitement as two hours on the exercise bike. Okay. All right? It will. Arena, Thank you're you. through. Thank you. I'm really happy that the judges have decided to put me through and I just want to go further and, and really show them that I'm not going to let them down. Please step up. Kuma. Seamus. Kuma and I get called up to the front and I think this is the time. Seamus. What do you think we've called your name out? I'm hoping it's a spot in the top 24. For what reason? That I cooked a cracking dish today. In your eyes? Kuma, do you think you deserve to be in the top 24? Yes. More so than Seamus? As well as. <laughs> You're a nice man. Seamus, love your confidence. You're both through to the top 24. Words can't describe it. Get down. We've achieved something, Thanks, and it's a chance to become the best that I can be. Thank you. When George puts the MasterChef apron on me, it's so exciting. It's a crowning moment. Off you go. The journey begins. There's only one of these left for today. That ticket, that key, belongs to... Danielle! Oh, yeah! I'm so relieved. I'm so excited. <sighs> yeah, it's an awesome feeling. How does it feel, Danielle? It feels... I can't actually describe how it feels, because it's just... There's so much going on right now. <laughs> it's crazy. How proud are you? I'm really proud of myself. I've been working really hard to just 
get my basics refined and, and um, I've been trying to work with as many different things as possible and trying to absorb as much as I possibly could because... And mum and dad? How will they feel? <laughs> Before I came down to the uh, top 50, my dad couldn't speak to me for two days because he was too emotional because um, he was just really proud. So um, I think they're going to be pretty proud. <laughs> he might talk to me now. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. You're through to the top 24. Thank you. <laughs> Well, congratulations to our six new members of the top 24. That means 12 places left, 24 of you. A 50-50 chance to join our top 24 in the MasterChef kitchen. My dream is just within my reach and I so want to grab it and I want to get the opportunity to get in that MasterChef kitchen and learn more and achieve my goal. Go home, get some rest, fighting boots on tomorrow. It's going to be a tough day. I'd love to get my hands on one of those aprons. There's stiff competition for them. There's still 12 spots up for grabs. I hope one of those is mine. The competition is getting a lot more serious. I've got my game face on. I want one of those aprons. And I'm going to get one of those aprons. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia, 2011's first masterclass kicks off. Also shallots. With the best ever Mother's Day menu. That is the base of a good Hollandaise. Gary unveils some tricks of the tray to make a beautiful breakfast for Mum's special day. The dish is called Green Eggs and Ham. George shows us one way of preparing octopus. So how long do you have to do this for, George? This will take probably about 15 minutes. Look at these quinces. And stay a while with Maggie Beer for some classic country cooking. I don't think you'll ever have a lovelier chook. Have you ever done this, Gaz? No. No? No. Do you want to go? No. <laughs>